Good morning, everybody. It's Peter here from AJS, and it's my delight to once again take you into a jeweler's workshop somewhere around Australia. And this week, we're going to sunny Hobart. And welcome back, Kira Lee. Hi. Hi, Kira Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you back on board, for which I think is your 11th appearance. So, uh, Kira Lee's presented a fantastic journey in sand casting. So, today we're taking you through the cleaning up of sandcast rings and pendants, correct? Yes, and whatever else I have on my bench. Oh, right. Okay, you've got a few other things that need cleaning up. Yeah, cutlery hmm. maybe. <laughs> we'll see how we go. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, welcome to our audience who's uh, just joining us online there. And if you'd like to uh, introduce yourself by just saying uh, where you're from, that'd be fantastic. So welcome aboard. Okay, Kiralee, I'll um, hand the screen over to you if you want to just uh, introduce us to what you're going to get up to today. Cool. Thank you. Just going to get rid of this little doobie. There we go. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I thought another cleaning up castings because I've done lots of, you know, how to cast castings and I thought, yeah, I've done one cleaning up casting, but let's let's go for a few bit more because there's so many different ways to clean things up, different approaches. Um, depending on what's happened to your piece, you might have to troubleshoot, and it's there's just so many variations, and I can't cover it all in one hour. So I thought I'll do another one. Maybe I'll cover a bit more in two hours. <laughs> 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 all righty. Well, we're ready to get started. Um, I thought I'd start on something really basic, which is just this little moon shape that I've cast. So that's the sprue on the back there. There's a little bit of spillage, as you can see, not heaps, but overall it's quite a clean casting. So it's a nice, easy one to start us off with, and then we can um, go from there. So what's the future for that moon shape then, Kiralee? What, what uh, piece well, of uh, jewellery? I think it's going to be a pendant. I haven't quite decided. I think it's going to be a pendant and maybe I'm going to do something really super cute and um, solder a little jump ring here. It's going to have a little charm hanging off of it or maybe a little gemstone and I'm going to put a bail on it up here. I'm thinking maybe or I could turn it this way and do something with it this way so it looks a little bit more tribal maybe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Today, I'm not going to be soldering anything onto this piece. It's just going to be cleaning it up because I haven't actually uh, fully visualized this little piece's future yet. But mm. cleaning it up is one step closer to finalizing what I'm going to do with it. So I thought I'd so just clean it up in front of you guys. When it achieves its future, it would be great to post a picture of it, hey? Easy. I can do yeah. that. I can send you, yeah. through, um, send you through pictures once I've finished it off. Mm. Fantastic. Cool. All right. Will well, we share your bench? Yes, please. Let's get into it. So first up is pretty much all the time you start with taking the sprue off. And you can see the sprue is quite proud. Um, I'm not going to take that off flush, I don't think. I think I'm going to leave that a little bit proud, like it's a little, little plate that I've soldered on there and I'm going to stamp it because it seems to be my little go-to. Um, so saw frame and let's cut through it. I like to wear, um, safety glasses anytime I'm using my saw frame, mostly because one time I uh, had the blade break and it shot up and hit me on the cheek, Ooh. which was just a little bit close to my eyes. And ever since then, I've just always worn safety glasses when I'm saw piercing. Um, and just last night I realised that I can't see as well as I used to which is um, you know a bit, a bit sad to realise that so not only am I wearing glasses for safety reasons now but I am started wearing my prescription glasses as of last night I was only using them when um, I was doing really fine intricate work like diamond setting Mm -hmm. But I was just doing regular bench work last night where I had to um, file up to a, a line and I couldn't quite see the line. 
Kiralee, so, you can't be getting older. Surely you're not like the rest of us. Oh, I know. I didn't think so too. I thought I was part of Peter Pan's Lost Boys group. But mm. what do you know? Just like everyone else. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Thank goodness we have glasses. Indeed. I mean, being a jeweler, a huge part of it is being able to see what you're doing because we're working with such teeny tiny um, components that if you can't see what you're doing, you, you just can't work. So thank goodness we have amazing prescriptions that we can continue working, you know, until we're pretty much blind. Mm. And you see the older jewelers with all of their magnification. Gosh, you know, they've got like, it, it almost looks like they've got a VHS strapped to their face. Well, you big probably know Chris Sherwin in Melbourne who um, has surgical glasses. They're oh, Zeiss wow. lenses and you've got to get them through a doctor. Um, but it obviously brings all his work really close to him and costs a lot of money, but it uh, makes his life a whole lot easier. Yep, yep, yep. it would. Mm. All righty. So I've just chewed through that sprue. So it's a little bit proud. I haven't sawn it off all the way down to the back of that pendant, but I'm just going to, because um, I was rotating it as I was cutting through it, it's not a very flat surface, so I'm just going to go there with a, a file, my needle file. I like to use a barrette file, or you can call them safety backs. Um, I'm just going to flatten that surface off so that it is a nice flat little plate. So it looks really smicko. And then when I stamp it, it's going to look even better. It's going to look like I've spent a bit of time saw piercing out a circle and stamping it and soldering it on the back here. But I didn't. You and I know that I've just been not lazy, efficient, been very efficient. All right, just getting that down so it's nice and smooth. We don't want any file marks, any bumps, cracks, crevices, any of that stuff. We want it to look really good. Cool, yeah. And I'm just going to give it a quick emery with one of my coarse emeries. I'm just using 600. I could go coarser, but 600 is what I picked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason. Yeah, it, it's coarse enough. All right, get those file marks out. I've got a nice, beautiful, smooth surface so that when I stamp it, it's just going to look so good. So that's a really nice little plate to stamp on. All right, now I've done that. I'm going to clean up this, this seam around the outside. Um, I think it's called the line of parting through all the foundry books that I've been reading. They've been calling it the line of parting. Um, it's just like a little skirt, a little bit of lacy spillage where the two... Um, the two clay halves haven't completely been flush with each other and a little bit of silver is just squeezed through that teeny tiny gap. I'm going to use my big, um, my big hand file. I think it's a double zero, nice wooden handle. So you can buy these from AJS. They're um, my favourite to chew through metal. It's got half round on one side, flat on the other side. I get a really toothy one and I get the big size and then I get the nice big handle. The wooden handle is my favourite. You've um, still got the you buy... product number on the uh, handle there, I think. I do. Look at that. So if you're really interested, <laughs> that's for the handle. <laughs> <laughs> because you've got to buy these separate because there's a whole heap of different handles you can choose from. Everybody, mm. you know, likes something different. I personally like the really big wooden handle. You can get a smaller wooden handle, but the big one's my favourite. So I'm just going to go around the outside of this pendant and I'm just going to tear off that that seam, that line of parting. There's not much on there, so it shouldn't take too long. And I'll go around the inside with my half round section of my file. Go around the inside of that little room. When I'm um, filing something round, 
not only am I pushing my file forward to cut because that's when the file does its cutting, I'm also twisting my wrist at the same time as I'm pushing forward so that I'm not having any flat spots. I'm keeping the file moving. So the whole time it's um, just following that curve, that nice rounded curve so I don't put any flat spots in it. Cool, yeah. And there's a little bit of um, gray stuff just here on the point, so I'm just going to run my file over that, knock it off. Wonderful. Now I've got my um, emery. Maybe I will go for the coarser emery. All right. What do I have here? I don't know. It's probably... It's dead. It's at the end of its legs. I can't use it. Back to 600. It was probably um, 240 or something like that. But 600 will do it. So I'm just going to emery wherever I filed. Oh, my Band-Aid's coming off. Oh, gosh. You guys are going to see my nasty little knuckle. So what did you do to yourself then, uh, Kirill? <laughs> I was doing Raku firing two weeks ago, which is where um, you have ceramic work in a kiln up to, well, I think it was 960 degrees. You pull it out of the kiln while it's still hot, um, yeah. using tongs, obviously, and then yeah. you chuck it in a, a barrel or a bin of sawdust and uh, the sawdust burns all over the all over the surface of the ceramics and anyway, it's in this oxygen reduced environment. And then you pull it out of that and you quench it in water. Whole time using tongs, mind you, but the tongs I was using uh, were a little bit shorter than um, uh -oh. the other tongs or the tongs that you should be using. So when I was sticking my hand in the kiln with the tongs, even Yikes. though I had, I had big gloves on, I had really big, big thick fire resistant gloves on or heat resistant, um, I still burnt my hand. Uh, didn't even feel it, though, which wow. I've been told is a bad thing that I didn't feel it because it's probably nerve damage. But I reckon I've already got nerve damage just from being a jeweler, and that's why I didn't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've gone around the outside of the moon where I filed it and over the little back here where I filed it. And now I want to get into this inside curve. Could get in there with this. Like if I really needed to, I could use it. But it's not going to do the best job. What is going to do the best job is my little split mandrel with some sandpaper on it. There we go. It's a bit ratty as well. And we're just going to – I like to use it like a potato peel. Just going to go around the inside and I'm just going to emery off all those file marks. I'm going to round off the ends of those um, the points of the moon. I don't really want them to be sharp. They'll catch on clothing. It could be problematic. So I'm just rounding them off using my little split mandrel. I'm just running the um, emery paper back and forth over that little point. Oh, carrying on, isn't it? Mm. Take that off. A little flap. Make a racket. Ah, oh, beautiful. Well. Wow. Now, this little piece has that sand casting texture on it, which I actually love. I love that sand cast texture. It's quite smooth. Um, it's not particularly rough. It, I think it really lends itself to this design as well, being a moon. So I'm absolutely going to leave that surface alone. I'm not going to remove any of that sand cast surface. Um, and that's the same for the back. 
I'm not going to remove any of it on the back either. The only part I've tampered with is here and here, which is where I did file down a little bit of, there was a little bit of extra metal and I filed that down. So there are some smooth spots here and here. And if I wanted to blend those in, because I want to make sure that that tech textures all over the back of that surface, I use this little um, texturing wheel here. Again, you absolutely have to have safety glasses on when using this because these little, these little metal arms, they come flying off and they absolutely shoot up and down your face. <laughs> yeah, so 100% only use this with safety glasses. All right, and let's just run that over that surface. And it's just adding this like stippling texture, which blends that with that sand casting texture wonderfully. There you go. That's all I needed because I only had a little bit. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see the difference, but the back. Yeah, is we can all... see that perfectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Well, that that's done. You know, as far as I'm doing today, anyway, that's it cleaned up. And now I have to think about what I'm actually going to do with it. You know, I'll solder a jump ring on it somewhere, whether it's going to be on this orientation or if it will be on that orientation. You know, somewhere up here with a little, I don't know, stone hanging off it. That could be quite cute. And at what point do you put your maker's mark on it then, Kiralu? I could put it on any stage I want. How about right now? Let's do that. Okay. Sorry, I'm just leaving the frame while I grab my stamps and my hammer. Oh, where's my... There. All right, I'm back. I like to use leather for my stamping. Um, some people like to use a lead, a lead block. I'm not a big fan of the lead block. All right, so we've got my maker's mark. Let's hammer that in up here. He wants to roll around, does he? Sure does. Let's hold that leather up so we can support that section a bit more. That's better. All right, lay my little stamp down. All right, he's a bit. <laughs> he's in there. The stamp's yeah. in there. Is that your particular mark? That one there yeah, that you just put on? It is. I'm just going back in and crisping it up. It's a bit tricky to hold on to sometimes. Wish you had three hands. Mm. So that was my maker's mark, which is um, this symbol here. Just in case I forget, I've uh, tattooed on myself. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm lining up my 925, which is a lot easier to stamp because it's a little, little stamp. And now I'm putting on my 2022 stamp. So as you can see, the way I like to stamp is by tapping and, and rolling my stamp around. Um, you do get the people who like to just flog it. One big hard whack yeah. to get their stamp. I'm not one of those people. So how do you express 2022? Uh, how do I express that? Yeah. So as in it what? Is, what Let me get up closer. We just lost the internet for a second there, Kiralee. Oh, sorry. Um, Can you see it again now? Yeah. And what does it say? Two. Two o double two. Two two nine two five and my maker's yeah. mark. There we go. Brilliant. 
it looks a lot better in person, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> better than um, what this camera is showing us. Okay. We'll set that little dude aside. And let's move on to the next piece, which is um, this ring I have here. Mm. I cast um, a stone in place. The stone was wonderful, fantastic. I started cleaning up the ring. And I think it was when I was stamping the inside of the ring that um, there was already obviously a fracture in the sapphire that I hadn't been able to see. And when I was stamping it, uh, just the jolting of, of the stamp made that stone fully split. So it already had some sort of fault in it that was, you know, holding itself together. But once I jolted it, that was all it needed and it just split. So I pulled the stone out. Um, so we've got an empty space, but it's such a nice ring. And seeing as it was an oval, an oval sapphire and I have not trillions, but I've got a lot of them. So I just found another stone that fit in the spot and I'm just going to pop that in place and set that in and show you guys what to do. Let me grab. This is the little sapphire that I'm going to um, pop into the ring. Okay. So it fits. Let me just explain what I've done, which is put the ring in this ring clamp, which works on this hinge. And you have two sides. You can either use the flat side or the rounded side. I like the rounded side for when I'm working on rings because it supports the ring surface a little bit better, I feel. And you've got this wedge and you wedge it in the back here. If for some reason you're working on um, a piece that's very chunky and this wedge doesn't fit, because the gap here is too narrow, you can get that wedge and chuck it in the side and it does the exact same thing. Yeah, good tip. You get these from uh, AJS. <laughs> <laughs> I think you get a bunch of different ones. I think you can get like little black ones as well and there's a few different styles. There's not really much point in spending lots of money on a ring clamp, one of these. If you want to spend lots of money on some form of ring clamp, get yourself like a bench mate, which is something that is attached to your peg here, or you can get yourself a GRS ball guys. But as for just a, a handheld ring clamp, you don't have to spend very much money. You just get something really simple like this, and it does uh, exactly what it's required to do. All righty, and now I'm going to pick up my little gemstone and I'm going to pop him into position. He should click in quite nicely because not if they weren't exactly calibrated sizes, but I found one that was pretty damn close to the stone I was using before. I uh, don't know if that makes it better or not. I've That's got good. My, little, yeah. my little pusher. I made the pusher myself. All it is is an old um, burr. And I've just used, a, well, you can use a grinder, but if you don't have a grinder, you can use a diamond wheel to put the shape into it. I like to have a flat head on my pusher and I like to have a lot of texture on my pusher. And I, I add that texture with the diamond burr as well so I can really rough up that surface. Main reason I do that is because I don't want a smooth surface when I'm putting pressure because I can slip. If you've got the texture, it has grip, it means that it's going to grip onto that metal and you're not going to be slipping all over the place. You're going to have a, a lot better time setting your stones. The other reason why I like texture on mine is because most of my pieces are textured, so I don't want to have smooth burnished metal around my stones. I want to have texture around my stones. That's my particular aesthetic, but it does have a functioning purpose as well as an aesthetic purpose. So I'm just walking around the edge of this stone and I'm pushing that metal down around the girdle of the sapphire. So I'm laying my little pusher down on an angle and then I'm applying a lot of pressure and I'm walking that pusher up and over. 
so that I'm pushing that metal up and over the girdle of the stone. So I'm coming from a little further back and then I'm wiggling it over the stone. And I'm just going all the way around the outside of that. And along the sides as well. Let's check the stone, let's see. All right, the stone's still a bit loose in there. Let's just go a little bit more aggressively. Being a sapphire, I can apply a lot of pressure compared to um, most other stones. But still, you don't want to go over the top and break it. So it is a good idea to start off a bit soft and then come in a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier. You don't want to go in and just smash the stone with too much pressure right from the start. You just want to get the stone until it's not going anywhere. So that's pretty close. He's, the stone has a little bit of a wobble to it still. So I'm just going to really hone in on it now. So I'm just checking around the stone to see what part of the metal is not touching it. All right. So I found a few spots where the metal is not right down on the stone. And I'm just going to focus my pusher on that. You can, um, instead of using the hand force to do all of this, you can you can get a, a hammer, a hammer piece for if you've got like a, a, a flexi drive, which is like the, the big, um, I guess, the big Dremel hanging from a pendant, I think it's called, a big motor. Um, you can get a pusher that will do sort of a manual uh, banging for you if you don't have the strength to push on it with your hands. Uh, if you have a little micro motor, you can also get a hammer piece for it. I personally find the hammer piece that comes with the micro motor is just wonderful because it has um, pressure sensors. So if I'm pressing harder physically with my hands, it'll beat down harder. So I'll just quickly show you. So it starts off quite soft. And as I press harder, it presses harder too. And that just means um, if I don't have the upper body strength to do all that pushing manually with my little pusher, with my little pusher, there he is, um, you can do it with one of these machines instead. And to be honest, it does a much better job. Well, it just really, really pushes that metal around. And it's quite gentle. This one is anyway, the... the um, hammer piece that you put on your your flexi drive seems to be a bit bit more aggressive but I find the one for my micro motor is gentle well you know as gentle as you can get for a tool that's smushing metal that stone's pretty much done put the finishing touches on it. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually um, using this tool to further texture this section so it blends in a lot more. So I'm just focusing on certain sections to compress the metal to make that surface more undulated, less smooth, so it blends right in. Wonderful. So, Kira Lee, you know how that stone's on the edge of the ring? Is that yeah. by accident or design? By design. Mm -hmm. There we go. Well done. And that's very secure now. You'd be happy to, um, once you've finished it off completely, uh, yeah. sell that to somebody and she's going to stay right. put. Mm. It's not wiggling anywhere. I'll bring that camera back up. So let's finish this ring off a little bit more. I did stop the finishing because the stone fell out, but now I can continue on. I'm going to use this little texturing spindle and I have my safety glasses on. I'm just going to run over 
the surface of that ring because I haven't applied this texture to it yet. I remember. Not only do I remember, but I, um, I can visually see from where I am that I have not done this stage yet. I'm just going to run over the outside of it and I'm going to bring that right up to where that stone is without touching the stone though. The texture, that metal that I've just bruised a bit. Wonderful. And the inside of the ring needs a bit of, I've emeried it before, but it's gone all white because I don't know, I must have heated it up or put it in the pickle or something. I don't remember what I did that though. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. all right, let's go in with my little split mandrel and some emery paper. Let's just clean up the inside there. Trying not to let the, um, the emery paper run over the back of the stone. Wonderful. Right, there's something that maybe we can do. I don't know if you guys can see, but on the inside of the ring, just there, there's a little bit of porosity. Now, I could spend ages emmering it out and chasing it out, but it makes the inside of the ring a little bit distorted. It's not super smooth and rounded anymore. But um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use my new favourite tool from AJS. This is a little burnisher, a little burnisher wheel. Uh, focus camera, focus. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's not doing it. There, there we, we go. go. Mm. So these little bumps, they have springs behind them so that they're not hard bumps. They're, they're soft. They move. But they um, are still able to smooth that metal down nicely. Uh, so it, you run it in your little micro motor or your, or your um, flexi drive, and you're going to go over the inside of your ring or over the surface that you're working on, over the section that has the porosity. And it's going to burnish that metal. And you want to go in one direction. So you pick a direction and you stick at it because you're trying to sort of, you're compressing that metal to cover up the porosity, the little holes. And you're also trying to drag that, that clean metal over the top of it, those holes as well. I'm just running along the inside, which is why you want to stay in the one direction. You wouldn't want to change directions because you've just dragged all this metal from one side over these holes. And then if you go from another direction, you start dragging the metal in the opposite direction. Over, you've just spent all that time dragging it from one direction over the hole, coming from the other direction. Yeah. I don't know. There's all sorts of ways to do things. That's just the way I was taught. Maybe there's not a problem with coming from the other direction. I was just taught that you stick to one direction. I'm just going over the inside of it. So I know that the um, where the little tool has been because the metal is going shiny because it's been burnished. And there we go. All right. Now I'm going to go over it with the emery paper. You don't want to go too heavy with the emery paper. You just want to go until it's removed the, um, the burnished surface. If you go any more than that, then start removing um, all of that compressed metal that you've just pushed over the holes, those little tiny holes. So only want to go until you've made the surface flush again. You should see a reduction in the pit holes and uh, and porosity. It doesn't work on anything super big. It only works on the really fine stuff, like the sort of um, like the inside of a Malteser, I guess. You know, it's all very finely speckled with bubbles. Nah, I don't know if that's a very good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our taste buds going. We're looking forward to Easter. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Easter's coming. So I've uh, burnished the inside. I've emeried it lightly. And now I'm going to come in with my little uh, cotton mop. And I've got some um, polishing compound on it. 
and I'm just going to brighten up the inside of that ring. Now, because I've gone in an M read in this direction, when I come in with my polishing mop, I don't want to come in on the same direction. I want to cross it. So I'm coming in on a bit of an angle like this. I can't come in exactly across it, unfortunately, because of um, it's mounted, so I can't get in there like that. But I can come in on a bit of a diagonal so that I'm not... I'm not um, polishing in the exact same grooves that the emery paper left. I want to smooth over those grooves. So I'm coming out on a bit of an angle. Wonderful. Let's find that spot that I... I didn't get it super, super clean because um, the pits were quite big. Uh, come on. There we go. Oh, we can even see your face in the reflection. Ah, that's cool. <laughs> but it's there a it hell of a lot better than what it looked like before. I wish that's you guys great. could see this in person. That is cool. You can see my reflection. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So what I would do, well, look, why not? I normally would put this in the little magnetic tumbler and then give the insider one last little brighten up, but what the hell, I'll just go over it um, with my little mop here. And then I'll put in the ultrasonic later. I reckon I'd probably blacken this and rub this back so that all of those um, cracks and recesses are black where all the high points will be bright and polished. So at the moment, this is all filled with polishing compound, but it does emulate a little bit the look that I'm going for when I blacken it. I don't know if you can kind of see it now. Uh, not really. I don't know what's going on with my camera today. Oh, well, we're getting there now. That's a great shot. So this is just polishing compound in inside of all these cracks and crevices. But it's showing you the look I'm going to be going for when I blacken it with liver of sulfur. Oh, gosh. Sorry, my camera's not so great. I don't know what's going on with it. Too many photos. <laughs> I have enough space. Right, let's have a little look at where that stone is. Oh, gosh, come on. Is it going to do it? Maybe not. There we go. There you That's go. It. Wonderful. Let's set that to the side. I'm happy with that. <sighs> Let's do another cleanup. Oh, do we want to do another ring or do we want to do a piece of cutlery? What do you guys reckon? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with the ring. So just All while right. you're getting that ring out, uh, Kiralee, I'll just say welcome to Ange, Wendy and Deborah who introduced themselves from all over Australia and New Zealand, would you believe? Oh, wonderful. And uh, quite of the others who are online as well. If anyone has any questions for Kiralee, please uh, ask them in the comments on Facebook and we'll uh, address those for you. Yes. All right. I have this ring with black spinel I've cast in place. This black spinel was collected here in Tasmania by my friend Richard Barker. Um, and unfortunately, one stone broke. That one right there. And for ages, this has been sitting on my bench with me going, oh, well, i got to do something about it. What am I going to do? Well, I finally decided I'm going to rip the broken piece of stone out. Just smash that little sucker out of there. <laughs> and I'm going to say that that's intentional, that I've got this gnarly little section here. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create another gnarly little section somewhere else and then somewhere else. And I'm going to make it that this ring has, um, like, corroded edges. So now it's become a design feature. And I'm just going to get in with my saw frame. I'm going to cut out a bit of it a bit of a chunk, and then I'm going to get in there with some um, ball burrs to really um, shape that up. Oh, broken. Ooh. That's okay. Let's 
change over that blade. I like to use quite coarse blades. Uh, I think they're called O2s. So it's not the coarsest you can get, but it's second coarsest. All right, let's load that up. Um, the saw frame I use, I think, again, it's from AJS, but it's like the economy version. I don't think it's, um, I didn't spend a lot of money on it. And I've had it for years and years and years. And it does the job wonderfully. Um, I know you can get all sorts of really fancy saw frames out there. I personally don't need to look any further than this one. It's um, one of your really basic ones. Oh, look at that. It was $21. Can you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Not very expensive at all. And it's so good. And I've had it for... Oh, you know what? I'm lying. What's that? That is that is the exact saw frame I used. I just remembered. This is the one I've had for years and years and years. Ah, okay. But I've had to swap over as early as last night, which I should have remembered because it was last night, because what's happened is the handle has come off, uh -huh. which is no good when you're soaring up and down. But this is after having this saw frame for over 10 years. It just means yeah. that I'm – so it's happened once before and I've tightened it by pretty much just smashing the section with a hammer to tighten up that wood to hold the um, piece in place. But last night I swapped over to my backup one, which is exactly the same saw frame. It's just a bit younger, which is why it still has the, um, the price tag on it. I will fix my other one. It, I will use it again. Um, <laughs> but just so you guys don't think I'm a liar, because how on earth could I have had this for years and years and still have the, um, the price tag so beautifully visible? <laughs> <laughs> yes, bit of evidence against you there, Curly. I know. All right, so I've just cut a chunk out of that spot there, and I'm going to do another random chunk, maybe right here in the middle. And I'm going to do another one at the back of the ring as well. What I'm doing is just disguising the fact that a stone broke. And let's take a chunk out where the sprue is. Actually, that's too perfectly opposite that, isn't it? Let's do a little bit off to the side. That's something you've got to watch out for. If you're doing something really organic, um, rarely do, do things line up perfectly. Oh, I mean, that's not true. There's lots of examples of that in nature. But my point is, if you're doing something organic, uh, it usually looks better if it's not perfectly spaced apart evenly if things don't line up usually it looks more organic and more natural if things aren't lining up perfectly okay um so i didn't get very far with cleaning this piece up there is spillage right here that line of parting so let's just chop off that Boom. Using my big toothy file, let's go over the outside of um, that sprue. Just get that nub off. I'm just really tear into it. go over the back of this ring a little bit, blend that all in. All right, let's get to the fun stuff now, which is tearing out some more metal on this, make it look more organic. Um, so you could use, you could use fish you burrs, you could use ball burrs, um, you can use twist drill, twist drill bits. So I don't know about you guys, 
I don't know how to sharpen my drill bits again. I've tried. It doesn't really work for me. Maybe I've got to get better. I'm sorry. But what I do know how to do is once the tip is blunt and I can't sharpen it again, the sides are still great. You can still use the sides of your twist drills. You don't have to chuck them in the bin once you can't drill with them anymore because they are they work pretty great almost like a fish uber so i don't i don't think they were designed to do this <laughs> but this is what i do with them so i'm going to use it like it's a fish uber i'm going to get in there and i'm going to really gnarly up that that section that i remove Again, make sure you have safety glasses on because these drill bits are not designed to come in on this angle. I have noticed they tend to break a bit more. But hey, um, you've got a bit more of your money's worth out of them. You don't have to just chuck them out because you can't drill with them anymore. You could use them as pretty much a fish uber. So I'm just getting in there and really gnarling up these grooves. Maybe I'll create some little shallow grooves over here by just running the... Letting it run across the surface. Oh, I, I'm going to make this quite a deep one. Quite a big one. Let's really tear into that. I don't know if you guys can see. I'll bring this down a little bit more. You guys can have a better view of what I'm doing. So again, I like to use this sort of like a potato peeler. That's how I'm holding it. And I'm dragging the um, dragging it towards me. If I was to go against me, that's the way the drill bit is spinning. So it spins out of control. But if I'm dragging it towards me, I'm making it cut into the metal. It's removing that metal. Don't forget to lubricate. I'm in control as I'm bringing it towards me. Wonderful. That's looking nice and gnarly. Let's soften this edge a little bit. Something to keep in mind, you don't really want sort of like a hook. That'll be very annoying to wear. It could get caught on people's clothing, small children's faces, you know. But try not to have any sort of hooky sections. Round that off. Let's blend these sections in. This is the fun part. This feels really good, actually, just like tearing into this ring gnarling up this surface. Oh. Putting it in a few spots so it looks um more intentional. express yourself doing this whatever you feel like that day comes out in um how you remove the material so how's the uh, drill bit holding up then Kirlin? wonderful because it's a really thick one mm. so what size is he he's 1.7 so he's quite chunky the chunkier ones seem to last the longer the last the longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last the longest. <laughs> <laughs> and let's bring these little rough sections down the front of the, the ring as well. Yeah, let's just really chunk into the edge, gouge into it, express ourselves. Avoiding the stones, of course. You don't really want to run your, um, your drill bit over the stones. Oh, yeah, I'm loving the way this is turning out. Very cool. What do you know? Turning out to be a really cool ring. 
I think we need to remove a bit more material up here, though. It's too solid now. Let's really carve that out. Lubricate your blade. It will work better when lubricated and it will last longer. Yeah, I'm really going ham on this. I don't mean, any ring left. <laughs> <laughs> You're having lots of fun there. I am. Too much fun. All right, stop it. Look at all these filings. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I've really gnarled into it. Really took We've got a great down. view there, really. It's excellent. Yeah. Mm. So you can probably see there is a bit of a seam running along here. I'm going to yep. knock that off. I'm going to get my little um, Moore's disc. I think we talked about Moore's disc last time. Get that from AGS. You get a bunch of different grits. Um, this little, I guess, you, I don't know what you call this little split mandra, little mounty thing. You press on it and you can pull pull your bits off. you and snap new bits on. Um, I don't know what grade I'm using, just whatever was handy. Let's chuck that in. So it's sandpaper on a little disc, that's what it is. I'm going to get in there and take off that seam. Avoiding the stones, of course. It's always a good idea to avoid hitting the stones with any of your, um, your tools and any of your abrasives. I'm just taking off that seam, blending it in a little bit. Okay. Now, I could leave all this gnarly stuff with all the, um, the drill sort of texture on it, but I don't think it really lends itself to this design. So I'm going to come in with this little Moore's disc and I'm going to soften that all off and take that um, I guess that machined surface away. I'm going to soften it and blend it in. And this more just because it's got a bit of flexibility to it. It fits nicely in all of these little crevices and it, it sort of softens them up and stops them being so angular. It becomes, again, even more organic. Mm. Making sure you have your safety glasses on. These little guys um, can spit up their their little bits of uh, uh, sandpaper or whatever the hell you've got on them. Pretty much whenever you're using your micromotor or flexi drive, just put safety glasses on, no matter what you're doing. <laughs> Sometimes the ring comes flying at your face and you're glad you have your face to glass. <laughs> cool. All right, now the inside of this ring needs cleaning up as well. And I'm going to quickly grab this barrel bow. I don't know what its name is. Uh, you can get it from AJS. They don't really go blunt. They're bloody awesome. They're like constant steel or something. I can't remember what they are. I just uh, sent a message through to one of the, um, the people from AJS and they um, just gave me a link and I bought it. <laughs> Could be tungsten it, carbide. There we go. There we go. Tungsten carbide. But it's... Um, Fantastic for removing a lot of material quickly. And I'm just going to go along the inside of the string and I'm just going to, instead of filing it, I'm just going to use this tungsten carbide, um, well, I guess, what do you call it? Wheel? Barrel burr? Tungsten carbide barrel burr? 
I'm just really quickly removing all that material. I could get in there with my file and do it by hand, obviously, because uh, not everybody has access to one of these awesome little burrs. But if you can get your hands on one, I suggest it. Sweet. All right, well, that's all done on the inside. That's why you should get one. They're so efficient. Mm -hmm. Let's add a little bit of emery to the inside of that, get it nice and cleaned up. Let's get my little texturing wheel. Let's go over the surface of this ring. Again, avoiding the stones. You don't want to hit the stones. You can get really close to them. It does add an amazing texture, Kiralee. Sure, it does. Don't know if you guys saw that little spark then. That's when um, one of these little steel spit hit the stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this little texture now. And I think I'll just texture this top surface. I don't think I'll texture the side. I don't know. At least I'm not going to texture them right now today in front of you guys. Maybe I'll change my mind later on. Right. Oh, I was going to say last thing, but really la, la. <laughs> i got to stamp the inside of the ring. Ah, I can do that later. Whatever. I'll quickly polish it now so you guys can see. And then I think that takes us up to, up to time. It does. Yeah, it goes quickly, doesn't it? Well, I don't know about you guys, but it went quickly for me because I was enjoying myself. <laughs> no, well, we were right face. up close and personal, Curly, so it was really good. Oh, good. So just while Curly's just uh, polishing up there, um, if anyone's got any <laughs> comments or questions, please uh, fire away. Yeah, please. I've been talking a lot today. So I would throw this one in the little magnetic tumbler and mostly because I want this surface or this undulated surface to be cleaned up, but I don't want it to be super polished. I do want a bit of texture on it, which means I chuck it in my little magnetic tumbler instead of hand polishing it because I want to preserve the texture. And with this one, I would blacken it and rub it back. I think that would look quite nice. Yeah, it would definitely have an appeal to the right personality, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. It's a lid for every pot. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Wonderful. Well, I don't know if anybody had questions, but I don't really mind if you do or don't. <laughs> so, you can uh, always ask questions in the comments and we can try and answer them later. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so Deborah commented great results. So thank you for that comment, Deborah. And uh, thank you to Anne, Wendy, Cherie, Christine, and others for being on board with us this morning. We've had a nice little adventure, and they are cleaning up our rings there and our pendants. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Kiralee. And we'll look forward to welcoming you and our audience back again sometime real soon. Uh, we do have a comment here from Anne. Looks great. Thanks. Have you done a video on how to cast the stones in place? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, go back to um, AJS YouTube and you'll see heaps of videos on that. Yeah, yep, so I've you done can a see few, them on. Yeah. yeah, so either on YouTube or uh, Facebook or the AJS website, Ange, and you'll see them. Um, AJSonline.com slash demos, yeah, and Instagram. So they're everywhere. All the yep. platforms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you can't find them on the AJS, I've also shared them as well, so you can find them on my YouTube or on my Instagram or on my Facebook. <laughs> if for and some reason Kira, you can't find AJS. <laughs> yeah, and all of Kira Lee's socials are in the uh, comments in this post. So, Okay, Kira Lee, we'll uh, call it a day there and look forward to welcoming you back sometime real soon.
Take care. Fantastic. Hey? Enjoy Easter, everybody. Eat all the chocolate. Eat all the hot crust buns. Do it. <laughs> My permission to you. Look, you can't put on weight this weekend. It just doesn't work like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, not right. on holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kiralee. You're very welcome. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>